Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.41 O son of the Kuru dynasty, the resolute intelligence of those who are on this path of bhakti is one-pointed, but the intelligence of those who are averse to bhakti branches endlessly. Sar Ardhavarshini Of all types of intelligence, intelligence that is aimed at bhakti-yoga is supreme. Bhagavan explains this by speaking the above verse beginning with Vya Vasaya. Resolute intelligence in bhakti-yoga is one-pointed. He describes the mood of one who possesses such intelligence as follows. The instructions that my Gurudeva has given me about Shramanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevana, etc. of Sri Bhagavan are my spiritual practice, my perfection and my very life. I am unable to relinquish them in either the stage of practice, Sadhana, or in the stage of perfection, Sadhya. My single desire and only engagement is to follow those instructions. Beside this, I have no other desire or engagement, even in my dreams. There is no loss for me. Rather, I attain happiness or misery by following them, or rather, my material life is destroyed or not. This type of resolute intelligence is possible only in pure bhakti, which is free from hypocrisy and cheating. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.28 Tato bhajeta maam pritaha shradhalur drita nishchayaha Knowing that all perfection is achieved through bhakti alone, a man of resolute fate will perform bhajan of me with devotion. Only by bhakti can intelligence become one-pointed. Sri Bhagavan elaborates on this by referring to that which has many branches, bahu shakaha, because there are unlimited desires in karma yoga the intelligence that is applied to it is also of unlimited types. Similarly, because in karma yoga there are unlimited varieties of sadhana or practices, it has unlimited branches. In the initial stage of Jnan yoga, one fixes one's intelligence in selfless action to purify the heart. When the heart is purified, the practitioner fixes his intelligence in the renunciation of fruitive action, or karma sannyasa. Having attained this stage, one then fixes one's intelligence in knowledge, or jnana. When one realizes that even jnana is unsuccessful and unable to grant service to the lotus feet of Sri Bhagavan, one fixes one's intelligence in bhakti. In Srimad Bhagavatam 11.19.1 it is said, Yanam cha mai sanyasit. Yana must also be offered to me. According to the above statement of Sri Bhagavan, after attaining the stage of jnana, one has to fix one's intelligence in the renunciation of jnana. Therefore, intelligence is of unlimited varieties. Since karma, jnana and bhakti all ought to be performed, their branches are also unlimited. Sar Ardhavarshini Prakashikariti Of the three types of buddhi yoga, karma, jnana and bhakti, only that intelligence, buddhi, which is related to pure bhakti-yoga, is supreme. The exclusive aim and object of the primary form of bhakti-yoga is Rajendra Nandana Shri Krishna, and that intelligence which is related only to him 
is called Aikantiki or Ananya, one-pointed or exclusive. The practitioners of such exclusive devotion are free from the desires for mundane enjoyment and liberation. Thus, they are non-doblicious and their intelligence resolute. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur comments on Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.28 as follows. They resolutely think, even if there are millions of obstacles in the performance of my bhajan, even if I lose my life, if I have to go to hell because of offenses, or if lust overpowers me, I can never give up bhakti, whatever the circumstance may be. I will not perform jnana and karma, even if Lord Brahma himself orders me to. Under no circumstances can I give up bhakti. Only this type of determination can be called unflickering or nishchayatmika buddhi. Due to lack of such exclusive nishta in Bhagavan, a person's intelligence remains engaged in karma yoga and jnana yoga. His intelligence is called many-branched because of a variety of aims and ob- objectives such as the pleasures of this world or the next that are related to profit, labha, adoration, puja and distinction, pratishta. His intelligence is filled with unlimited desires. According to the Vaishnava spiritual masters, Sri Krishna himself is the non-dual, original, supreme, absolute reality. He is called Nirguna, due to his being simultaneously beyond the material qualities of goodness, passion and ignorance, and also endowed with all transcendental qualities, such as opulence, sweetness, compassion and affection for his devotees. However, modern people who are uneducated and bereft of tattva and whose intelligence is covered by illusion, consider Brahman, the absolute truth, to be without transformations, nirvikara, without variety, nirvishesha, and untainted, niranjana. They accept him as being beyond the modes of nature in a mundane sense only. They consider the pastime incarnations, lila avatars, of the Lord to be the impersonal Brahman but covered by Maya and that his form and his qualities such as compassion are illusory and therefore material like their own. They say that by worshipping Brahman endowed with material qualities Saguna Brahman their hearts will gradually become purified and they will become one with the impersonal Brahman, devoid of material qualities, Nirguna Brahman. The establishment of such conclusions is as useless as trying to strike the sky, because scriptures such as the Bhagavad Gita, which describe the transcendental form and characteristics of Sri Bhagavan, refutes this despicable concept in every regard. Therefore, pure devotion to the transcendental absolute reality, Sri Krishna, who is endowed with all transcendental qualities, is called Nirguna Bhakti. In Srila Sridhara Swami's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 3.29.11, he explains Nirguna Bhakti to be of one kind only, one pointed, Aikantika. Srila Shukadeva Goswami has stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 3.29.7 to 10 that because Sakama Bhakti is performed with various material desires, it has unlimited branches such as Tamasiga Sakama Bhakti. Materially motivated devotion 
mixed with the material mode of ignorance.